I think it's recording now. Okay. Hi guys, it's Mrs. Bell coming to you straight from my living room. And then we also have Miss Stevenson over there. Hey the guys, I sure do miss seeing your faces. Never thought we'd be teaching this way, huh? Yeah, this is pretty bananas. So I hope you're watching this video uh, in your jammies with your comfy clothes on with your dogs and cats next to you or your lizards or your goats or whatever you've got going on at your house. Um, this first video um, is to kind of give you the structure of what we are going to be doing. It is really impossible actually to have orchestra class without being with you in the same room. Um, and so what we're trying to recreate here is not going to be the same as orchestra rehearsal because orchestra rehearsal is really fun and the magic of all that fun happens when we are all together in the same room. So we're going to try to give you um, as good of an experience as we can and it's definitely not going to be a replacement for orchestra but we're going to try to keep your skills up and see if we can get you to improve on your instrument before the end of the school year or before we all go back to school whichever happens I don't really know yet. So we're going to take it one week at a time um, the first thing I want to make sure you know about, I'm going to try to share your screen here. So, um, is in Google Classroom, Ms. Stevenson and I posted a whole bunch of stuff for you um, that is enrichment. Okay, enrichment means that is not the screen I'm trying to get you to look at. This thing is in the way and I can't get to the tab that I need. You can click and drag. There the we go. Bar. Okay. So Sorry, my Zoom toolbar was totally in my way. Um, You're gonna have to give us a lot of grace on this first video because we're still trying to invent the wheel here. Exactly, okay. So if you go to your Google Classroom and you go to Classwork, hopefully you guys can see this, you will see Orchestra from Home Enrichment Resources. And this is where we put all the stuff for when you're bored. Um, when you want something to do on your instrument and you're not sure what, and uh, this is where you go. This has got all kinds of different resources. There's a couple things we want to make sure you know about first. The first thing is you can absolutely do your um, smart music pass offs. I'm oh, sorry, not your smart music pass offs, just your regular pass offs, like your weekly on Fridays. We do pass offs. We are still doing those. You can still earn your way to Ribbon Master. So you go down into classwork and you're going to have to push that see more. And then you're going to click on this pass off flip grid. Okay, so once you get there, um, so many of you have already done this. I've seen videos from Naziah and Harper and Vanessa and Christina. Who else has done a couple? There's just a whole bunch of them. So um, make sure you go in there and do your pass offs. These are optional. You don't have to do them. They are not for grade anymore, um, but they are just if you want to earn Sorry, my family just walked in the back door. That uh, if you want to earn pass offs and earn your way to Ribbon Master, this is a really great way to do it. Ms. Stevenson and I, and maybe Ms. Hinton, will give you some feedback and we will tell you in our comments or in our video yes, you get the ribbon, no, you don't. Here's what you need to work on. So you can use that feedback and go back um, to practice it some more or head to the next one. As you get your ribbons, um, I would recommend doing a little check mark on your uh, your pass off sheet just to, so you can keep track of it since we don't have physically have the ribbons just check off as you go so you can help keep keep track. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really good point. Okay. Um, there's some solo packets in here. This is the same solo packet you should already have, but if you've lost yours, you need it then that's where you find it. The other thing I wanna point you to is this orchestra help desk. This is also in Flipgrid, but if you have a question about something specific, you can record your question and then we will record an answer for you. Remember that on this help desk, everyone can see the video, your request for help. So um, if it's easier to email us or let us know or something, we can help you tune your instrument. You can do that via Zoom, so shoot us an email. But if uh, you think somebody else might be having the same problem, I've answered a question from Derek about, how does my dog shush for me? Sorry, uh, I've answered questions about rhythms and a couple things like that. So that's a really great resource. The other thing I wanna show you is this audition. Hang on just a second, before you go on, Mrs. Bell, the, in the uh, help desk, they can help each other, right? The help doesn't Absolutely. have to come directly from you and I. Yes. So they, yeah, so if you have a question, you happen to, you see your friend ask a question and you know the answer, go ahead and, and respond on Flipgrid and answer that question for them. It doesn't yeah. have to come from us. That is awesome. Yes, that's a great like crowd resourcing 
all of that, okay? All right, the last thing is the audition packets for next year. We are already thinking and can't wait for next year to have orchestra. We are going to school eventually. We are gonna be back in class and we're gonna be back in the orchestra room. We're gonna have rehearsal and we are gonna have a next year and, um, and we can't wait for that. And so part of what's keeping us sane is looking forward to that moment when we're all back together again. And so these are your audition packets. So look through that, decide where you think you want to audition. I think the auditions are probably going to be done uh, through a video, uh, but it won't be until May. So you have plenty of time to practice and start looking at it now. And if you need some help, this is the great way to the help desk. This is a great um, way to get some of that information. Okay. All of this stuff, this enrichment stuff is not for a grade. It is for fun. It is to inspire you. To, to give you some different things to do when you're bored, when you want to practice on your instrument, um, and, and to just to provide some resources for you. So none of it is required. None of it is for a grade. It's just really um, for funsies. Okay. I hope that makes sense. All right. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about in this video is um, what is for a grade and how are we going to grade you in orchestra without seeing you. Okay, so on Sunday, you're, you and your family are going to get an email and that email um, is going to have a bunch of links for all of your classes. And when you click on that link, it's going to take you to Moodle. That's going to take you to Google Classroom. And when you click on it, it's going to look like this. Okay, that email is going to come from Mrs. Arnold. It will not come right. from each one of your teachers, just from Mrs. Yeah. Arnold. With exactly. You're going to get one email from Mrs. Arnold with all this information in it from all of your teachers. Okay. So, so we don't overwhelm you and your mom and dad. Yeah. Your inbox. Okay. And in that, um, you're going to go down here and it says click here for the lesson. I'm not going to click on it, um, but it's basically an eight measure um, piece of music that you've never seen. It's eight measures. You're going to practice it. You're going to get good at it, and then you're going to record it through a video, okay? And then you're going to submit that video into Google Classroom, and then we will grade it, all right? These eight measures are not anything new. There's no new concepts there. It's on the A string and the D string. It's in a major finger pattern. It's no big deal, okay? So I am actually going to click on it so you can see what it looks like, okay? You guys are going to fit into one of four categories. Okay, the first category of kid is going to be kids that have a working instrument at home and kids that have access to technology. So you will not have a trouble making a video with your Chromebook and then submitting it into Google Classroom, no problem at all. Okay, that's the first category. The second category of you, um, you are kids that have your instrument at home, but maybe you broke a string, it's really out of tune and you can't fix it. The bridge has fallen down, your bow hair popped out, like something is keeping you from having access to be able to play your instruments. So sorry, my daughter's phone is going off like bananas. Sorry. The joys of doing this from home, shush. <laughs> Back, sorry guys, okay. If you are somebody that has access to technology, so you can make the video, but you can't do it on your instrument because your instrument isn't functioning at the moment, um, then you are gonna take this, those eight measures and you're gonna clap it and count it for the video. Okay, does that make sense? There's another category of people that is going to be kids that um, do not have their instrument at home because you left it at school and you didn't pick it up, that's not gonna be very many of you. I think maybe one or two, maybe three or four of you do not have instruments at home at all. Okay? <laughs> if that's you and you have access to technology, then you are going to clap and count the excerpt out loud for the video and you're gonna submit that, okay? The last category of kids are kids that don't have access to technology or not enough internet bandwidth to upload a video, okay? Um, and maybe you have your instrument or maybe you don't have your instrument, but the way you are going to, um, to submit your playing or your clapping and your counting is that you're going to call our voicemail and you are going to play it on your phone, okay, or your parent's phone or somebody's phone, um, even a landline will work. You're going to play as though you are leaving a voice message. You're going to either 
play it for the voicemail or you're going to clap and count it for the voicemail. And our phone number is down on this second slide. You can see it down there. Okay. So figure out which category you're in. Okay. And then these are some things to remember that you can look over. This is the beginner orchestra. So if you're a beginner orchestra, that's you. All right. There's three lines. Look at the clef. This top line is the violins. This middle line is the violas. And this bottom line is the cellos and the basses. If you're a bass player, you're going to have to shift into third position to get to the C sharp and the D. Okay. To make sense, I hope everyone is nodding their heads right now. Ms. Stevenson, what did I forget? Make sure you're looking at the key signature. Make sure you know, uh, think about what your finger pattern is going to be. You can say your note names out loud or the finger numbers out loud if you're struggling with one of those two areas. Um, you can always clap and count before you play or record. Um, and you, the great thing about doing it at home is that you can re-record it as many times as you need to um, before submitting it. So you've got a lot of um, wiggle room there to, to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If you are somebody and you're looking at this and you're like, oh my gosh, that's really simple. That's not going to take me any time at all. Then if you want to be extra, you can add in some dynamics. You can um, add in some slurs if you feel like it. No problem. As long as you're playing the right notes and the right rhythms, all of that stuff will just be extra. Okay. In your video, make sure that we can see you playing. So we need to be able to see your left hand and your right hand all together. Okay, um, I don't care what's in the background, so you can do it wherever you want to do it. Um, but make sure that we can see your fingers moving and we can see your bow. That way we can give you some good feedback, okay? If you play cello or bass, you're gonna need to set your Chromebook a little further away than yeah. typical. Yep, and you can do that recording as many times as you want to. Make sure if you're a beginner that you are on the beginner page, okay? Um, and that you're not on the seven through 12 orchestra page because these are going to be a little harder um so stay on stay on the right slide okay make sure you can also um you can uh, put this into the presentation right and then it gets a little bigger for you so if you need to see it that's how you do it okay all right every week you are going to have a different eight measures okay we hope that these eight measures are fairly straightforward and simple for you, okay? But if you need help with something, please reach out. I know that we cannot be there to help you, but we are here to help you, okay? Through our computer screens and through all of our technology, um, we are here for you. We're here to push you and encourage you along the way. Um, I know this is not really what anybody signed up for, and I know you guys miss your friends. I miss my friends. I miss seeing Ms. Stevenson every day. Um, I miss teaching so much, um, so we're all just going to kind of manage this together, and we're going to try to do the best we can, and we're going to push you as hard as we can and support you in all the ways that you need to be supported, okay? So we are here for you. Go practice. Have a good time. Do something. Play some stuff that you want to play, um, because now is a great time to do that, all right? I can't remember if we talked about this at the beginning, but we have specific office hours um, throughout gotcha. the day, every day, that we will uh, be able to respond quickly. So if you are sending an email um, outside of our office hours, which you can see those on the Moodle page, those are posted for you. Um, if you're seeing, if you're sending us an email outside of those hours, it might take us a little longer to respond. Um, but if you are emailing within those hours, then you should get a pretty quick response from one of the two of us. Um, I would recommend emailing both of us because you'll, you're certain to get a response faster. And then we are going to have some um, opportunities for Zoom meetings also um, to, to just see your faces and um, help you out with different things. So be looking for um, announcements for that kind of stuff too. So yep. We miss you That'll guys be, like crazy. So much. We miss you. Um, the Zoom is going to be on Friday. I think um, beginners, I think we said we're at 10 o'clock. But I think I, beginners are 10 to 11. Yeah, 10 to 11. So um, you're not going to have player instruments together. It's really just a chance to check in and say hi and see what you're up to. 
Um, and if you have a question, we can help you. If you need help tuning, that's a good time. Um, but we are here to help you tune. I know some of your instruments are probably rural out of tune now and you need help peg tuning. So we're all gonna become peg tuning experts together. So we are happy to walk you through that. We did that, um, Emma yesterday called and um, Ms. Stevenson walked her right through it and now her cello is in tune. So we are- It worked. Professionals, totally works. You can peg tune your instrument. We will show you how. Um, and uh, so that you don't have to worry about that. Okay, this has been a pretty long video. If you stuck around to the very end, I'm so glad. Um, good luck and good skill practicing those eight measures and we'll reach out again soon. And if you need something from us, please reach out to us. Okay, we love you, we miss you. Let's get some wiggle fingers going here. Ooh, can we do it this way if you? Oh, oh, long distance wiggle <laughs> fingers. So anyways, uh, we look forward to seeing you guys and hearing you play. Um, and uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. Bye.